All right, guys, welcome to the Buscemi Family Channel. I'm James, and today's video is going to be about what I'm gonna specifically be looking for in Q4 earnings that are just around the corner for SNDO. We've been waiting a long time for a really positive outlook and a way forward with this company, but there's one specific financial metric that I'm gonna be looking at uh, to really see if there's a positive way forward for this company, I'm gonna bring it to you right now. Please comment down below. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome again. Disclaimer, do not buy stocks off of anything that I say. I'm an amateur investor. I'll put some videos that I've done on SNDL in the, in the description below, but do not buy stocks based off of anything I say. If you do that, you're just a silly human being. Okay, got that out of the way. So guys, we have Q4 earnings coming up, which is going to obviously be full year earnings. I think it's on the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. And I've been following this company closely. I've been investing in this company for years now. I have a sizable investment for a number of reasons. Number one, I feel that the world is opening up to cannabis. Number two, I do believe in Zach George's vision, namely the vision of diversifying his revenue to both cannabis as well as retail liquor. I also think he's going above and beyond with respect to organizing the cannabis side of the business so that it's more fruitful for the bottom line of the company. And while he's kind of cleaning that up, he went ahead and purchased Alcana in an effort to kind of bring in that other revenue stream. So I do believe that he has a good vision. Some of the things that I don't like, number one, A number one, I cannot stand the company's communication style. We as retail investors seem to always be in the dark. I think it's almost ridiculous and laughable, the communication style. I simply can't stand it. And if I met Zach George, I would tell him, why are you so quiet? Why are you such, so lacking in transparency as it relates to SNDL and the pain that the retail investors have gone through? Because all of us really know, and the people that are likely to watch this video are the retail investors. I, I often talk about it in the chat rooms and people come after me in anger. But the fact is that you simply cannot deny that the communication style of leadership is, is poor at best. However, again, I do believe in the vision of the company. And I'll restate some of the things I like. I like the diversification of revenue. I like that it's, he seems to be cutting costs, cutting expenditure, kind of, you know, when you kind of acquire different companies, whether it's through um, the investment portfolio or just through like kind of acquisition, you have to kind of clean things up and that takes a little bit of time. And I think he's doing a fine job of that. But I'm gonna get into now what my major financial metric that I'm gonna be looking at in the upcoming Q4 earnings. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys. What you see on my screen here is the first quarter 2023 earnings. And I wanna draw your attention to that financial metric that I was talking about earlier. Let me just scroll down here. This is the major bullet point that I'm looking at when I hear the earnings or when that earnings come out and they send, they send it out, you see it on Yahoo Finance or any internet sites on the web, net loss, net loss loss. In Q1, they had a net loss of 36.1 million. Now, it's important for the audience to know that when we're talking about SNDL, we're talking about Canadian dollars. So let's jump in real quick to what that translates to American dollars. I'm sitting in here in South Florida. I want to know what that sounds like in American dollars. So let's go right to the calculator real quick. 36.1 in Canadian. So we're gonna say 36.1 equals $26.69 million net loss Q1. Okay, let's go ahead and take a, a look at the second quarter. But I'm just gonna remind you, and I'm gonna write it down here. 26.69 million. Let's take a look at Q2. Net loss gets a little better. 
Now we're at 33.2. Let's take a look at what that looks like in American dollars. Now we're down to 24.54. Not a tremendous drop in net loss, but a couple million bucks, $2 million. Now let's take a look at Q3. Wow. Net loss, 21.8 million. Let's take a look at what that looks like in Canadian dollars, 21.8. Now we're down to 16 million, 16.12 million in net loss in Q3. So as you can imagine, Q1 in American dollars, 26.6, Q2, 24.5 million, and Q3, 16.12 million in net loss. We're getting closer to net profit or net income, I should say. Let's take a look at some of the definitions of what these things mean. But let's take a read here. A net loss occurs when a company's expenses are higher than its total revenue. Again, a net loss occurs when a company's expenses are higher than its total revenue. If revenue is exceeding expenses, we've hit the promised land. At that point, it will be very hard for institutional investors to not jump in. It'll be very hard for institutional investors like mutual funds, large banks, and hedge funds to jump in it is then a profitable company. Let's take a look at some other things here. Now this is interesting guys. What is the opposite of net loss? Again, what is the opposite of net loss? Net loss is the opposite of net income in which income or revenue exceeds expenses and results in a profit. Let me repeat, in which income or revenue exceeds expenses and results in a profit. At that point, how can institutional investors continue to manipulate the stock? 50% of the volume of SNDL trading is done in the dark pool. Right? I, I speak about how that I find that completely and utterly unacceptable and I don't know how the SEC allows such ridiculous, plain manipulation. It's stock manipulation. However, the beauty of the hedge funds, the beauty of the institutional investors is when they come on your side. Let me repeat that. The same power that they're putting towards bringing the stock down is the same power that they could bring towards building the stock up. In other words, they come on board because we no longer have a net loss. If Zach George can make that possible, if they do that, now we get the power of the institutional investors, namely the hedge funds to come on our side, creating unbelievable momentum. And that's where we, we hopefully will start to see the stock price take off. Guys, I hope that this was fruitful. I don't want to make, make it too long of a video. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel.